Hello, Rick off here. Welcome to video number 24 of Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator Project Series. Now in this video, I'll be showing you the second test track layout on another masonite arc. And let me just slide that into view here. Okay, here it is. Now, let me get my pointer out here. Now, see this line? This is where the um, sidewall of the previous track was located, right at this line. Uh, we've moved this back in one half inch from where it was. Now, when it was out at this line, uh, this created a considerable amount of drag. Uh, because there's actually a three ounce drag force at that line. I've measured it with my pull scale and I'll be showing you that in a moment. Showing you the results of the pull scale test. But you can see that um, I've set that back in a half inch and it continues that way all through the magnet group. Um, this is the let me see, this is the attraction point. This would be the first repel point out here at this end. And we start in a repelling motion, which propels the rotor forward. Then we get to the attraction point, which is the lead end of the uh, south facing up magnet group. And this is where the uh, the unit is pulled in by attraction to the stator magnet and it progresses without any movement until we get to the repel point which is out here. This is the second repel point which is at the tail end of the rotor magnet group and this is where it needs to curve outwards some amount in order to um, uh, achieve some amount of repel force. If it stayed uh, straight at that point, like this, then um, what we would end up with is a, a reattraction because the um, the stator magnet would want to pull the group back this way, reversing direction of rotation. So we do need an outward bend. And how much bend we can get is the question. And um, it really needs to be a rapid bend. And I don't see how that's going to be possible. But uh, let's just try this test. First, I'll show you the uh, pull test. Uh, showing you the forces that are encountered, or at least that were encountered in the previous experiments. And then we'll move on to the actual track test. Now at this point, I'm going to show you something that I think you'll find quite interesting. I've attached my pulse scale, which measures in pounds and ounces, to the static carriage. And um, I have the carriage located um, away from the rotor group at this time. And so it, it would be very easy to pull the carriage. And let me just show you. I'll start to pull it forward towards the rotor group. And you see there's a, a measure of zero at this time. I'll try and keep the camera aligned with that. Um, now, yeah, now as I come out a little further and the stator magnet begins to engage the group, uh, the reading goes up, saying so goes one, two, three. Now when I get to the three, when I get to the three ounce measurement, that represents the location where the stator was over the rotor magnet group, the south facing up rotor magnet group. 
so when I went into that group at the lead end uh, in the previous demonstration, it showed that um, what I had there was actually a three ounce force against the, uh, the track face. In other words, the wheel forced against the track with a three ounce pressure. Now, uh, as, as the progression continued through the group and the track um, was adjusted outwards to deflect the um, stator carriage, the total force seen in the, in the first experiment where the um, arc was pinned at the first hole, giving a full inch of uh, movement. The force at that point would have been, this, this amount would have been six ounces. I'm currently out one inch. Six ounces. So that's a considerable force and uh, of course uh, that's exactly why we couldn't go all the way through the uh, group in the first measurement. Now I've disconnected the pull force scale and zoomed in a little bit here. I'm going to grab the static carriage and start pulling it outwards. Now. I currently have it aligned right at the edge of the polycarbonate ring and that would be where the greatest force was noticed. Now if I let go of the carriage you'll see that it snaps right back inwards uh, with a, quite a good pressure. That's the 6 ounce force driving it in. So here's the track mounted, the second test track. And you can see it just stays at the same, the same location all the way through until it gets to the second repel point. That's the last magnet of the south group would be the second repel point. And then it curves outwards. Uh, the idea now would be to bring that south magnet, uh, the south pole of the stator magnet out so that it would be lined up for the north group which would be approaching. I'll bring this all the way back around. Slide the static carriage out. Engage the wheel, the rollers. And let it go. All right, now went up to this point. That's about uh, 110% of the um, rotor magnet group. But what happened was that as soon as it hits this uh, curve outwards, just that slight negative pressure there is enough to halt things. There's not much uh, force required to move at that point. But uh, we don't have any propulsion at the tail end. That's because uh, to get a repulsive kick there, the south pole of the Steiner magnet has to be aligned at the uh, back end. And of course it isn't. The north pole is still aligned when we pass the group. Okay, so it looks like we're going to need to have an additional method to move the stator and I may explore a magnetic means of doing that. Thank you for watching. All the best to you. Until next time, this is Rick. Bye now.